So that's kind of what Squirrel Cage Jail looked like in 2010 when we visited. Um, now we started off the night having the tour guide walk us around the building, you know, tell us what others have ex experienced, where it happened, so we had a good idea of where to set up, where to set up our equipment. And we got three pieces of evidence during this uh, initial walkthrough with the tour guide. Uh, the very first one, he was showing us an old book of the names of the inmates, and it had, you know, listed their name, what they were in there for, what year it was, all that. And a female voice actually come through. It was the first piece of evidence we caught, and it sounds like it says 60 days. He was making a joke about being in an tree for 30 days, seemed a little rough or something like that, and a female voice could come through at the same time and said 60 days. So that was by far one of the coolest EVPs we ever caught as far as relevance and just you know tying in with what we were looking into. Secondly, um, another a male voice come through this time. Sounded a little irritated as we walked up to the fourth floor um, with the tour guide again. As he was showing us around, it sounds like he says, Ah, don't be mad or don't be loud, I'm sorry. And, you know, maybe it was just like, hey, I'm trying to rest, leave me alone, you know. And that's kind of what we picked up from it. And then lastly, there was one more EVP during this time. It sounds like, at first I thought it said your aunt thinks it's totally wrong, which doesn't make any sense. Like, they don't, they wouldn't know our aunt. So, looking back at it again, maybe it's saying your antics are totally wrong. Um, which, we hadn't really started investigating yet, so, I don't know. But it's there, and, uh, I gotta play it for you. Listed. I think all those from the summer of 32, generally what people did and how long they got stuck in here. Uh, a year for adultery seems a little rough. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. And that's as far as we can take. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Look, but I wouldn't go in here. As we uh, did this little walkthrough, you know, we do it every place we go. Get initial readings, get EMF readings, get a feel for the building, and all that good stuff. During this time, my brother had a pretty substantial personal experience. There wasn't a lot of evidence to back it up, um, but he's very sensitive. He feels things and picks up on things. I'm not saying he's psychic, but he just... He can feel when they're around, let's put it that way. But we were doing our walkthrough and we come up on a little uh, rope that was in a, you know, a picture board type thing that they were displaying telling the story. I believe some guys got drunk, killed a bunch of people. And I had mentioned something about the guy who hung himself because initially I thought that was the rope of the guy who'd done that, but it wasn't. But uh, I kind of mentioned, you know, that's kind of a coward's way out. And you know, probably wasn't the right thing to say. You know, I've learned over doing this over the years. We were still pretty new at this point to talk to them like they're people and not disrespect them, judge them on choices they made in their own lives. But um, I think that kind of set something off. And my brother started feeling weird and having some, you know, cold shivers and that sort of thing. And as we kept going, eventually he had to leave the room. Said he had a real bad headache. Um, his neck hurt. So we got him out of there. Shortly later, you know, he was sitting on the steps, had his neck burn. So, you know, that could have done, had something to do with that little deal of us talking about the guy being a coward and hanging himself. So, with all that, you know, the hanging thing, and then that shortly happened after, you know, it was just a personal experience. We didn't document anything. His neck didn't look like it had any rashes or anything like that, but I believe my brother, I believe what he experienced, so that was strange, and it could deal with some of the sadness that people feel up around themselves as well, you know, maybe a spirit still lingering there that isn't real happy with the choices he made in life, but um, I'm going to go ahead and play that video for you and just kind of let you see what the experience is. <laughs> Second floor. 82.7 right now here, and I've slept more already. The infamous Jake Bird, who was an axe murderer, spent time here. Where you at, Jake? Said he killed over 40 people, chopped them up. So you hacked up 40 people, where the heck are you?
Why would you do such a thing? You're undereducated. Slavery wasn't exactly your favorite place to be either, was it? My left arm. That must have been the guy who did it, under the noose. No, those, remember those were the guys that got drunk and killed those people? Oh, and they, that's um, it. Yeah. Anybody else here? Here. Johnny, go downstairs. Sitting right outside the door on the steps. Okay. Dizzy. All right. Is that his neck hurts? Is his neck hurts on the side. I did mention something about the coward's way out. Huh? I did say something about that being the coward's way out. He did? I did. Where you at, John boy? Mm -hmm. You okay? One side of my head's just throbbing. My neck hurts. Where you at? Well, let's go in here. There's these two little side rooms here, and then we'll go up in the stairs. Johnny needs to go down and rest. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, you need to be in the AC. I know, I'm about ready to get down in my tank top. Three minutes, or whatever. Huh? Your throat's hurting? I'm hoping for you. My head hurts right here. Get a flashlight. I don't know. because this light doesn't give it any justice to tell. So after rocking around with the tour guide, you know, we set off on our own walk to just to get the uh, baseline EMF readings uh, and just kind of learn the building in the dark, you know, all them good things. And we did catch a couple EVPs, both of which seemed to back up some of the claims and happened around the areas where those things were claimed. 
first one sounds like it's a nail very clear it says where do you get that now we had brought some prop toys you know like saws and uh, supposed shanks and just screwdrivers and that kind of stuff and we told the inmates we would give them if they wanted help to get out you know they had to let us know they were there that kind of thing trigger objects and that man will always come through and says where'd you get that kind of i think it was responding to that whole ordeal the second evp we walked up to the second floor on the cells on the outside of the main cell jail where uh, mothers would actually stay and were allowed to keep their children in there with them. They still got a little baby crib set up in one of the cells, kind of showing that. And as we were walking in, it sounds very much like a baby kind of crying twice. Like, uh, I, mean, I don't know how to explain it, but you'll hear it in the video. So that was another EVP that validated, you know, I think it's residual, just residual energy of somebody who stayed there, who had a kid, and their kid was crying, so. This is the- Anybody back here in the hole? And would you like to talk to me? As we made our way up, uh, I think we were on the second floor when the first one was got, we kept making our way up towards the attic and just checking out every room as we went. There's three more pieces of evidence, all being EVPs that were captured. Um, first one sounds probably residual, like it says, I hate myself, maybe. You know, this could have been one of the prisoners that were feeling sorry for what they did, you know, or having regret for how they lived their lives. And the next piece, um, actually would kind of validate that as well what i think it's saying it sounds like it says i love you jesus you know maybe they found peace in god during their time staying there i don't know it also kind of sounds like i love you G jen or something too you know so i'm not real sure but i tried slowing it down but it definitely says i love you i think it says jesus that was the second one and we did catch one more evp during that time frame and my brother was kind of reaching out to an inmate who was named Jake Bird. And he was actually an axe murderer. Killed, I think, I don't remember the exact number, but a bunch of people. Suddenly killed them with an axe. You know, with Felicia, Iowa being so close in that house, uh, what happened there? Could there be ties? I don't know. Depending on the time frame, I never looked into that, really. But um, he definitely fit the description of somebody who could have done what happened over there at the Blisca, Iowa house, so uh, he was definitely not a good person, but my brother definitely kind of started provocating a little bit and uh, kind of getting under his skin, trying to get under his skin. He's like, Birdie Bird, where are you at? And sounds like we got a response, says, I'm up here. And we were entering up by the third floor, some cells on the outside of the main jail cell there. So. Hey. Hi, it's Janet or some of the best. Uh, we finally made our way up to the attic, still just walking around, going in the room. And this first one was amazing because, you know, you can catch evidence at the time and they may be trying to lead you to something, then you find things out years down the road that correlate with what you caught back then and it's kind of like an aha moment, you know. Um, this EVP is class A and it sounds like two voices. As we entered into the door, right into the attic where the living quarters was for the jailers, um, a male voice comes through and says, down the hallway. And then another voice comes through and says, keep searching. 
Now, one of the main paranormal TV shows that you probably watch um, went and investigated there a few years ago, and they found, actually ended up finding a hidden room back in the corner of that 4-floor attic that nobody knew was there until then. Now, keep in mind, we investigated in 2010. So that was years before this room was found. And we truly believe that this voice was trying to point us to that room. Um, again, it would have been right around the corner as we walked in the door to the left-hand side. And then we get that voice that's down the hallway keep keeps searching. So, pretty cool piece. All right, I'm gonna stop this tape. And shortly after capturing that EVP, there was a few other things, EVPs that come through. Um, my dad started asking, reaching out to Otto Guthoff, asking if he was, you know, around, trying to reach out to him. And a voice comes through and says, he says, yeah, sure am. So it wasn't really Otto responding to us, but it sounded like another spirit was talking for him from what we captured. And then, uh, secondly, another voice come through, and it sounds like it says Sheriff slept in here, which would have, probably. That was the living quarters for them kind of people. But saying the Sheriff slept in here tells me they weren't the Sheriff, and that would lead me to believe it was J.M. Carter, because, you know, he, he wasn't a jailer, he, wasn't, he just overseen the building when it was being constructed, so maybe he was trying to reach out to let us know Otto was there as well. This is one of the reasons we believe both of spirits probably occupy that attic. So. Shortly after that, uh, we did catch more evidence. It's <laughs> a lot of it, but we got some video stuff. Um, it looked like I was filming my dad and he was trying to get EMF readings and a little orb comes through and kind of tosses it down and enters his back or back side. Um, I kind of gave him stuff and said maybe a prisoner was trying to violate him, jokingly. <laughs> But um, that being said, that was caught, and we also got some really weird EMF uh, stuff going on. And again, right back by where that room was actually found, right next to it, uh, my dad, you know, asked, "Are you auto? Can you make this K2 light up once for yes, twice for no?" And then sure enough, it went off once. So another validating piece that seemed to validate that claim. Mr. Rado, you in here? This is the opposition over here. This is the opposition over here. Or are you one of those stashing them liquor bottles? I wouldn't mind a shot myself. Oh wow. I just got an awesome orb. Yeah, right in your back. Right in my back? Yep. Really? Because I just had a 1.3, 1.2, and then you said that. Yeah. I just shot myself. Oh, wow. Are you curious about all these meters? I'm sure by now other people have told you what they're used for. Maybe you know. Oh, I had a spike way up to orange. Oh, yeah, it's going again. off. Thank you. There's that is nine. great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Point four. Thank you very much. 
Yep, it's going off like now crazy. We, all right, now we're communicating. Oh, friend. wow. Good for you. Thank you very much. That's what we asked I, for. I did every hair standing up. That's all right. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That's what we want. Thank you very much for trying. Can you do it one more time? Are you a man? Please light it up. Thank you. So you are a man. Okay. Are you young? Light it Two all. Two for no. One for yes. Oh, he's talking to us. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Are you a jailer? One for yes, two for no. How about we do that? One for yes, two for no. So are you a jailer? Are you Mr. Carter? Are you a trustee? Thank you very much.